Hello, ActorSage here on the Sage channel, and today I'm here to show you guys a ship I'm calling the Broadsider. Now, I was realizing I was getting a fair few views on one of my older ships videos with the Star Destroyer and whatnot, and those things did an awesome broadside battle once upon a time, so I figured let's go ahead and build a new ship, but following my sort of more modern rules about just building ships to get jobs done and in slightly geometrical ways, I came up with this monstrosity, and in fact, for once in a long time, it's actually a completely vanilla large ship, meaning there are no mods used on this whole huge ship at all. So once it's up on the Steam Workshop, eventually you'll actually be able to head and just grab it and crash your computers with it. As you can see, we are getting around six terrible frames per second here. Now I'm going to take a minute just to address this, and the fact that my GPU utilization is actually Add. And if I was actually even bring it up on screen, I can even show you guys. My GPU utilization is actually at 21 to 18 percent. It bounces around and around there. The memory load is even pretty low. Overall, it's not really being used fully. And same with my CPU, you can see it's only using around 20 to 30 percent of that, and that bounces about a bit. And 32 percent of my memory, which I have 16 gigs of. DDR4. So yeah, a bit strange. I thought Space Engineers had no limit. It was just on your system, but apparently it has some limitations. So we are going to have some lag while looking at the ship. Now, as you've just seen there, as I flew back and forth a little bit, it has that big wall of weapons there, Gatlings and missile launchers. But if we were to go to the back of it, or actually I think this is the front, doesn't really make much difference. You can see we have a huge wall of thrusters stuck here. And in fact, if I was to fly in close enough and slow up, you can see we have large and little ones all scattered about in here. They're all bumped in a little bit, sometimes at varying heights. And in fact, we have these sort of metal bars here that stick up over some of them. Not directly over their exhaust, but over the actual main plane that they're on. So if I zoom down here like this, you can see there's actually an open gap here. And I did this just mainly so we could have an interesting design. Because as you've noticed, this ship isn't painted. It's all gray, which I'm sort of keen on leaving my ships as such, at least for the time being. And of course, it saves on build time. Because coloring all this, these blocks in is a pain in the arse, especially when you're doing angular blocks or something like that. Anyway, so you see here, this is the basic design of the ship, the front or of it, which is the exact same as the back. If I was to just go ahead and fly over there really quickly, you can see the back in brighter light is pretty much the exact same thing. And in fact, you can actually see it a little bit better, the design that's actually stuck in here. It's almost like a flowering something or another. I was pretty happy with that. I could have gone back through and added an actual triangular piece to it. I think it was, there we go, that button, like this. But for now, I think it's all right as it is. Not to mention some of these, I have thrusters stuck right up into the corners. So if I was to add triangular pieces, there would be a few of these that could not actually have them. Pretty happy with that. As I was saying about the sides though, we do have thrusters all along the sides. As I fly back, you'll be able to see that we have tons and tons of thrusters actually stuck in there. And if I was to actually fly up and above this ship, you'll see that we have a bunch of thrusters stuck in here as well. The farther away I get, obviously, the lower LODs some of these objects get, so the frame rate picks up a little bit and we can actually move about. You can see bunches of thrusters in here. So this ship actually has equal thrusters for up, down, left, and right. Now, I was originally counting out the forward and backward thrusters to match one another, but it turned out to be a bit annoying, and, well, with all that space right there, and I really wanted to keep this design like this because it's the original shape I had in my head, I just decided, you know what, forward and back can be slightly faster. Now, Actually getting a closer look at all these turrets, you can see I actually have them carved in their own little ports. And even I have connection points sometimes to connect them all up because they're all piped together on the inside. And you see the turrets have a nice little slope before they get to themselves. So they can actually have a pretty good firing range all the way down. And they can actually look almost straight up, if not straight up, fire up that way and hit targets. So they have a pretty damn good fire range. No access doors behind them as I've had in the past. They're just completely sealed off on their own. But if we fly up, you can see each one of these has the exact same setup. Unlike the thrusters, they do not switch directions. They're all just, or they do not switch directions because they're all just set up the same way because they can all aim straight up. Meaning their firepower is much stronger out to the side of the ship than it is above, but they can still all aim straight up. So they will be able to get one volley out, even if they can't quite as easily aim farther over that way than they would be if they were aiming down and up. And of course, this is mirrored on the bottom of the ship. If we fly down here below this, you can see it's much the same down here, even with our terrible, terrible frame rate of seven currently. 
Really don't know why that's happening. Anyway, you can see that the outer edges, I wanted these nice slopes to it. I went ahead and used the ramp blocks because of course I wanted to have this vanilla build for once. So I used all those. Makes it look a bit strange, but overall it's pretty nice and it gets the shape that I wanted it in. As for the thruster blocks, I should probably fly in here and take a closer look at them. So you can see that really they're just taking the basic opening that was used by a turret and then going ahead and replacing it with a thruster until they get to this point where they're doing much the same, but then you can see I've had to alter this big block that sticks out to be about like that. My original plans with, oh, and I do have a Gatling turret all the way at the top, just so this whole line here is actually defended by something. Theoretically, this Gatling turret can aim all the way down through most of this to be able to hit anything that's decided it wants to try to sneak in here. A little trouble hitting anything right here, but hopefully enemies aren't going to get too close because it's designed to be bombarding from as far as it can before, well, just getting blown up or defeating its enemy, hopefully. And hopefully it would have another ship or two with it to give it fighter support to get rid of any of those nasty little flyers buzzing about it and giving it trouble. Let's see, what else do we have to talk about? Well, we got the interiors of the ship. So, if we fly to right here, you can see this bit of a strange opening. Originally, my idea for this ship was going to be much more complex before the lag started kicking me arse. I was going to have this opening right here, which would lead into a large hangar bay area sort of in the inside in the control room right in the dead center. But as the lag became too painful to really bear building with, and I knew if even if I did continue building, by the time I decided to show it would be even worse, I just blocked this off. The only other way to get in right now is actually all the way over by the engines, and it's this opening right in the middle. And I'll show you that in one second. One last thing I want to point out is that under all these turrets, this big block right here was actually originally planned to be glass. I was going to go back through and put glass windows on all these. But, and that way I could have hallways in them, maybe a living quarter in between each one of those, or at least an overlook or something like that. But as I said, the lag became too much, so I had to cut back on that. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually fly down this way. I'm all in spectator mode, but either way, because my character's already inside. And as we fly through this opening, you can quickly see we have this just big open area here. No real point to it, I just kind of liked it. And then we have our little airlock door here, or I say airlock, it's just a singular door fly through that and we have this huge corridor here. When I realized I wasn't going to be able to have the windows on the outside, I was still thinking maybe I would get something on the inside, but the lag again was far too much and so I just ended up making this huge hallway which actually leads us all the way down to the very center of the ship behind that area I blocked off. And if we fly through this door you'll actually see where my character is standing right in here, the little control room. I've also not put any lights in. I could, would have loved to have put tons and tons of lights around as I usually do, but of course the lag had to take into account that, so I had to abandon some of my original plans. And you can see I've actually glassed in this whole thing, sort of the idea that it would be an uh, oxygenated area right here, but again, lag and stuff like that, I didn't put too much thought into it. I just wanted to get this project done once it had become so, so laggy. Because there, if you look up here, I even have a door. Which, of course, if you came through that door, you wouldn't actually be able to get into that thing. Not to mention, you can't actually get out of that thing to maintenance the rest of the ship right now. Unfortunately, lag has pigeonholed me a bit. If we were to fly through this wall and see into the interior of the ship here, you can see it's sort of a chaotic mess at first glance just because of the sheer number of gyroscopes that you see on the walls. If I was to actually fly back all the way to this far wall here, and you can see I even had some detail put in to the actual large passageway that we had gone through to get to that center area there, which sort of has a spider web of arms coming out to hold it in place. It's sort of like a ship within a ship, but there's no thrusters or anything in there. But you can see that on the walls we have all of our pipes connecting up all of these different bunches and bunches of turrets on the outside of the ship. In fact, if we were to fly... Oh, actually, I didn't think I had saved that, but we have these little armor pillars popping up right here. But if we were to fly up and into here, so you can actually see through the walls slightly, you can see that we have the piping all set up to go to the turrets, and if we fly down here, much the same right there. The whole way through this whole ship, everything is piped up together. And as I continue flying through these walls, you can see that it actually leads, has a piping that leads between each of the different sectors and just keeps on going. It is a huge, huge mass of piping. Also, this ship was built modularly, where I built one of the rings, as you could call them, one of these segments with all the turrets on it, and then I built one of these segments with all the thrusters on it, and then copy and pasted them all the way to the middle point, which then I copy and pasted that huge section and mirrored it over to the other side by converting it to a ship and then just placing it on the other side where I could then rotate it around and hook it back into that middle segment, which is just this one right here that originally was going to have that large doorway in. Pretty damn nice thing. I, overall, I like the idea and design of it. It's just a shame the lag is so harsh when we are so close to it. 
Hmm. Anyway, one last thing to show, I guess, would be its reactors and stuff like that. As if you look in here, there's a huge amount of empty space, which would have originally been filled in with, you know, living areas and all that. But there's this large bump down at the ceiling. If we were to fly up, and actually we have little openings here where we can actually fly it through and in. If you look here, you can see the little opening I just flew through. I flew through a slightly bigger one, I think. Yeah. But there are a lot of very tight ones, and then it goes back to bigger ones like this. As the ship does have thrusters and then turret so there's two different segments types but as you look up here you can see that in this big bumped out area that we're now flying around in we have all the reactors for the ship and they go all the way down from the front to the back of the ship without stop and if we fly up here you can even look in here the pipes connect that reactor up and down towards the next one uh, and they even connect into these lovely large cargo containers which actually have missiles in one and gatling gun ammo in the other and quite a bit i actually went into creative or survival mode on another map just to see how much i could fit in there on times three inventory and set it to be pretty damn high and then above all these we have another connection pipe that runs between all of these so lots and lots and lots of redundancy here as you can see redundancy between each of these connecting together then the line that actually runs in between all this metal and then the one above all these containers huge amounts of redundancy because this is also the way it transfers inference transfers items from that side of the ship to the other side of the ship if it needed to be and of course this is also where all the ammo and uranium is stored including uranium that's actually in those reactors in fact that's the only uranium in the ship right now is the uranium stuck in those reactors dear god i hope you did not watch this video at full screen the low frame rate might have driven you insane by now it is pretty dang terrible, but I wasn't going to throw away another one of these large ships, as I've done before. Anyway, you can see a small little oopsie doozy here where it doesn't actually connect to the wall, but you get the gist of it. Huge amount of reactors and whatnot all up here with its own sort of blast wall kept hovering it all and hiding it away. And of course, that's mirrored down here if we were to fly all the way down and go through this opening right here. You'll see the same thing stuffed down here at the bottom of the ship. And it's actually quite the sight, I think. Anyway, I guess that's it for this ship, really. You've seen the whole gist of it. I'll go ahead and do, give it a little spin. By the way, it does have a nice little antenna stuck right here at the middle, as well as that control seat that we saw right in the middle. That's about it for creature comforts on this ship, really. There aren't any. Oh, by the way, here is the original opening to the outside that I've blocked off now with two pieces of heavy metal. Unfortunate that it has to be blocked off, but again... I wasn't going to be able to build the ship how I originally planned. I actually, one of these days, want to build a cylinder ship based off of the large ships from the movie Dune, based on the book, I believe, where they basically load up tons and tons of larger but smaller than that thing ships into it and it warped them all at once. I'd like to build that someday, but for now, no dice. Anyway, flying back through here, uh, just giving you guys a quick glimpse of what the center piece actually looks like, as best you can see it in this sort of strange dark here. Mm, yeah. Hard to see, but it's got a bunch of metal pillars coming to it. Let's go ahead now and actually hop in the seat and do our K, convert this to ship. There we go. Save. And then you all get to see the ship fly at the very same time that I get to see it fly. It's as far as we can zoom out. Wow. So let's go ahead and start accelerating and yeah. Vanilla ships, and I didn't space the engines, engines behind engines with enough room or something so they wouldn't burn each other, so it is a super, super slow, sluggish ship. This would be truly one of those, slug it out, it's going to float and just punch the crap out of another large ship sort of things. There is no running away for this ship, it's going to fight till it's been blown to bits. As you can see, I've been talking for a little bit now, and it's still only up to 2.5 three meters per second and very slowly gaining in fact i'm actually even holding w d and space now so we're firing engines in multiple directions now what this does have is of course it's huge surplus of ammo and it's huge amount of reactors in uranium because you can see even with three directions of thrusters firing we have 22.57 power usage with so much more to spare so this ship could really really keep on going yeah Anyway, that's it for this. Let's go ahead and do a turn and see how quickly it turns. And it does not turn quickly whatsoever. As you can see there, and maybe even here, my mouse is being moved about. And the ship is barely, barely turning. Uh, yeah, let's turn our inertial dampers off. Let's go into F8 mode, spectator mode. 
and we'll zoom out a little bit. And I'll try to do an F9 now and actually turn the ship while firing forward thrusters. And you can see it is a monstrosity and so, so lumbersome. Cumbersome and lumbersome. And lumbering, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for this ship. I think it was an interesting experiment to go ahead and build a vanilla ship like this. Very, very confusing as to why my GPU and CPU are only at 27-ish percent right now. Uh, yeah, they're all at like 27-ish percent or less. I don't know. There they go. 30-ish percent, actually. Physical memory even, only 32 percent. Don't know why, quite why that's happening. I'd be expecting to get around 60 frames per second and those things to be all the way at 100% usage, but mm, no dice. And I have set Space Engineers to high priority in my task manager. Bit odd. Anyway, guys, that's it for this ship. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, sometime in the semi-near future, I hope to go ahead and actually have a battle with one of these. But given the lag, that might never happen. Uh, as you could sort of expect this huge monstrosity of a ship to just instantly crash my game or my whole computer as my computer has proven to be somewhat unstable from time to time with its wonderful startup issues and all that. Anyway guys though, that's it for real. Thanks a bunch for watching. If you want to go ahead and try to crash your computer with this ship, feel free to go ahead and find it on the Steam Workshop probably within the next day or so. <sighs> for the final time, for the love of God, thanks a bunch for watching guys, and I shall see you guys next time.